Good morning, everyone. This is Rabbi Joshua Hoffman, Valley Beshlem Synagogue. Privileged to share a few words of uh, thought and inspiration. I hope it'll be inspiring as we go about our day. And in particular, we're focusing on the subject of Pesach and the many themes that are going to be explored as the holiday begins. Um, I wanted to remind us uh, as we share a few thoughts here that at Shalom we have really transformed our community and moved it into the online space. And I encourage you all to go to our newly redesigned vbs.org website uh, with beautiful photos and greater facility with all different kinds of points of access, including and especially our VBS at home site, uh, which you'll find on the homepage of the vbs.org. And it has all kinds of programs and it has all kinds of uh, links for useful information. There's Passover prep material and there's also incredible opportunities for learning and connection with not only the fellow members of the Valley Beshlem community, but uh, with all of us, uh, wherever we find ourselves in the world. So you see my orange tree, um, which is ripe with uh, fruit as spring is upon us. You see my, uh, my artichoke plant over there. It's starting to sprout some artichoke hearts, and we're looking forward to harvesting those very soon. And as spring is upon us, uh, that's also a wonderful opportunity for us to focus in on the most important holiday in the Jewish calendar, which is Pesach, Passover. And it's happening beginning next week, uh, literally a week away from today. And, um, and it's the most important story because it really does give us the sense of who we are uh, as human beings, uh, our orientation, our place in the world, and what is our purpose. And it's more than just a, a shared common history. Uh, it's more than shared foods that we enjoy around the table. Uh, it's more than just a, uh, a way of relating to each other with our sense of ethics that are born out of the story itself. But it is primarily and even more fundamentally, it is the story that links us throughout the generations uh, to not only, um, not only our sense as Jews, but a fundamental sense of identity. That's why it says, "Behold, dor vador chayav adam lirot et atzmo ki iluhu yatsami mitzrayim." In every generation, and that wasn't just casually thrown. In each and every generation, including our generation today, we're supposed to look at ourselves as if we were ones who have experienced redemption. That our story of sadness and sorrow and oppression, of of strife and difficulty and challenge is transformed into joy and transformed into hope. I have a, a professor, one of my favorite professors from rabbinical school, Rabbi Elliot Dorf, who taught me this very, very important lesson, and it finds its way into the Haggadah as well, which is uh, when we were sitting and studying philosophy, we would take a look at the various philosophers that, uh, that we would be exploring together as a class. And he would uh, enable us to begin offering critique and then offering praise. So we would start with the critique. We'd start with that which was sad and difficult or that which was hard to understand or what, that which we disagreed with. And then we talked about what was praiseworthy or what was really valuable about the contribution that this particular philosopher had. Uh, that, that sense of starting with struggle and strife and then emerging with praise or with optimism is the core story of Passover. It's the core story that we hold on to as Jews. And it's, especially in a time like this, the core story that we need to hold on to in our lives in this present moment. There are lots of things that are negative and that are challenging. And the news, if you just picked up the paper today, it's only becoming more and more difficult to see the light. And hopefully in these few moments, you can see the light and know that tomorrow will be better than today and that our future is brighter than our past. That optimism, that sense of hope animates us as Jews and it's the message that we continue to bring to all of humanity even in great times of strife and difficulty as we do now. I wanted to just share one key thought about what I think is the essential part of the Seder. There are many important parts, but this one is, is kind of essential. 
we do uh, many of the rituals. We recite blessings over wine. We'll eat the matzah and the maror. But the beginning of the telling section, the magid section, it's called, we take the matzah, we lift it up, and we say these words. Halachma anya di'achlu avatana be'ara demitraim. Kol di'chvin yete ve'yechol, kol di'chich yete ve'yivsach. Hashta hacha l'shana haba'a ba'ara di'israel. Hashta avde l'shana haba'a b'nei chorin. So the story has it that we say, this is the bread of affliction. And for those of you who grew up like me with the Maxwell House Haggadah, you remember the oval picture with the finger pointing down on the matzah, in which you're supposed to point at it and say, this is the bread of affliction, or it's the bread of poverty. Or if you want to interpret it even more succinctly, the bread of humility. And it's the, the bread that our ancestors ate in Egypt, and it's the bread that we're going to be eating now. So we're really ingesting history while we're taking a part of this matzah, we're not going to eat it at this particular moment in the Seder. We're going to point to it and say, at a certain point, we're going to eat this matzah. And then it says this wonderful follow-up. It says, Kol yete v'yecho. Anybody who is hungry can come and eat. Anybody who's in need is allowed to come and sit and be a part of the Passover holiday. So here's the thing that I thought was most extraordinary and interesting and to hold on to for today. One is we tell a story that says, this is the bread of affliction. We hold up matzah and we say, we're a part of a history in which we've been victims of oppression. We've suffered. We've had moments in which we've been withheld from our needs being fulfilled. And in those moments, we understand what it means to be limited, to be in narrow places, to be uh, to be cast aside to be thought of as less than valuable than we really are. And in those moments, we didn't give up hope. Those weren't moments of despair. Those were moments in which we realized that if we lifted up our hands and we cried out for help, help was to be found. At that moment, once we understand that that's our story, our story is this is the bread of affliction. This is the story that we have to tell ourselves. We were once oppressed and now we are redeemed people. We know what it's like to suffer and we know what it's like to have our needs met. The most remarkable thing in this moment is the very next word. It says kol dichvin. The word kol means everyone. It doesn't mean just the special people get this story. It doesn't mean that those who have suffered are only the ones who are worthy of redemption. Everyone who is hungry is allowed to come and sit. Our response to our own suffering isn't that we just huddle ourselves together and say, look at what happened to us. But actually what we tell ourselves in the world is everyone who is hungry needs to find satisfaction, nourishment, sustenance in the world. And it's our responsibility to bring that to them. Some of the commentators say, why is there a repetition between everybody who's hungry should come and eat and everybody who's in need should sit and and enjoy the Pesach? It seems like both are trying to say the same thing. The message is, at least in the according of the tradition and the way to leave it for us is like this, that there are those that are hungry, those that are hungry in body, and we have a responsibility to nourish them. And then there are those who are in need of nourishment, spiritual sustenance, connection, belonging, And we have a responsibility to care for those as well. This story that we tell ourselves isn't just about us alone, but it is a way that we open up the door for our responsibility to the entire world. And today, I hope that you find your place in some small way to be a halach ma'anya, a person who has the bread of humility. And in your humility to go out into the world and say, you look like a person who's hungry. Let me figure out how to nourish you. Maybe that, that hunger is a physical need. And maybe that hunger is a spiritual sustenance. However it is that you find somebody in need today, it is your responsibility. It's your opportunity. It is indeed your blessing to be able to share this bread that we have been holding on to and sharing with every generation, Beholdor Vador, in every generation, and now in our generation too. I hope you all have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you online with many of our continued programs of learning and celebrations of the holiday in the coming week.